My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional mountain bike tester for over 21 years. And today, I'm up high in the Yorkshire Dales with the high bike Exduro All Mountain 3. 160 mil travel front, 150 mil travel rear, all round E trail bike. There's a full range of high bikes from 180 mil travel right down to, you know, city hybrids and hardtails. But this is a real sweet spot in the range because you're getting a brand new chassis and you're getting their SES uh, pivot system and a really well sorted, I mean cost effective certainly spec, but really well sorted all round spec. So let's have a look at the frame first. First big advantage of going up to the three from the two is you get this in-tube battery concept. So the battery is encased in this neat down tube, plastic guard on there, charger port there, so you can charge it while it's still in the bike, which is uh, really handy. I mean, a lot of problems with e-bikes come from hoying the battery in and out, so nice to be able to charge it in situ. It's a Bosch motor down here, which means you've got a small drive sprocket there, but crucially, you've got this SES jockey wheel up here, which means as well as the chain guard here, can also run a chain guard here and crucially for the suspension it means they can lift the main pivot up to this point here so it's a nice high pivot suspension uh, the swing arm swings back away from impact so it's really really good shock absorbing setup but because the chain runs over that wheel the pivot and the drive chain are completely kind of synchronized you know there's no pedal kickback there's very very little uh, effect from chain torque on the suspension system itself uh, at the back you've still got a four bar system and then it drives through this linkage to a RockShox Deluxe RC. So just lock out on the back and simple rebound but really long stroke shock so uh, plenty of air, plenty of shock stroke there to sort you out through that 150mm travel. And it's a Bosch Performance CX motor which is used by a lot of companies, I mean Bosch, advantages with Bosch, massive company, uh, loads of support globally. Uh, disadvantages are it runs basically there's no separation between the motor and the drive chain so if the battery runs out you're pedaling the motor around as well which creates a lot of drag and if the uh, if you go over speed so if you pedal faster than a limited speed then also you're taking the motor with you so there's a lot more drag than sort of freewheeling systems like Shimano steps or the bros motor but uh, pretty much the benchmark solid reliable rotor used by a lot of people the difference with it on the high bike is they've created this what they call the uh, gravity casting interface which is basically kind of a, a claw that holds onto the motor uh, they actually sand cast it and then rotate the sand casting around to make sure you get a really really consistent fill on it and then they x-ray it as well to make sure this whole unit at the bottom this whole bottom section is one piece cast uh, and that means they can actually take the mounting plates off the motor and also by moving this pulley up rather than having it on the back which is uh, where you'd normally find it on a Bosch bike they can move it up and round so the chain stays I mean they're still long because it's an e-bike uh, but they're only 465 whereas some e-bikes you're looking at like 475 uh, so not quite as short something as a Levo and some of the other sort of proprietary system e-bikes but definitely a short back end for a Bosch bike which keeps it relatively agile some other neat features as well, you've got a little splash guard on the back of the uh, shock there which works pretty well, uh, internal cable routing and a fully replaceable skid plate as you can see. And I've been riding this a couple of months now and it's already taken a few uh, scrapes but that whole bottom section on it is fully replaceable. You've got cheap and cheerful SRAM NX uh, rear mech and cassette, super durable and you're not going to cry a whole bunch if you accidentally wipe it out on a rock and you've got a nice Moulded in uh, chainstay protector there. I don't know if you can see all the pivot head, all the bolt heads there are circlip protected, which is quite a nice feature. And you're actually getting a trunnion mount shock, so bang up to date metric shock there. And you've got 66 degree head tube. You've got 457 mil reach on this large, and a 75 degree effective seat tube. So good all round trail geometry. Very, very similar to the e-bikes, you'd specialised Levo, Trek, well, no, Trek's longer in the back end, uh, Merida, Cube, uh, Focus, uh, just, you know, back, pretty much bang, dead centre in terms of accepted e-bike geometry. You've got G-Spec Trail, uh, 
quad em brakes from trp and the g-spec means it's got the hybrid pistons so you've got a ceramic and metal piston which can cope with a lot more heat buildup without it affecting the rest of the braking system uh 180 mil rotor on the back and a nice big 200 on the front so uh plenty of stopping power i mean not the stoppiest brakes available but certainly uh, a good choice for an e-bike just from that heat management point of view uh, you've got a RockShox Yari fork uh, it's the EMTB versions they're asking to add 10 psi just to cope with more of that uh, static weight and it's just a, a simple RC damper on the side but you've got 35mm legs really really tough fork and if you did want to hop it up to uh, lyric level all you've got to do is change the damper out everything else about this fork the chassis the seals the uh, Debonair air spring is all exactly the same as the uh, top end Lyric fork. Uh, tapered head tube as you'd expect, uh, neatly organised cable route in there. Here's the G-Spec brakes, again not the prettiest things in the world but you've got reach adjust and they're thoroughly functional and they've been super reliable as well. We've run sets in the Alps a lot and uh, been absolutely rock solid. Uh, here's the Bosch Purion controller, so you've got your various modes there, turbo, EMTB, tour and eco. So four modes, you don't have a sport mode, that EMTB is kind of the automatic replacement for sport mode. Uh, it goes off how much torque you're putting through it and alters it all the way from tour to basically turbo and it gives a softer start which you'll be looking at later on the climbs. Uh, so that's, that's kind of Bosch's new feature and it's a, it's a response to the fact that some people were saying it was a bit grabby off the start, there was almost too much bite as you uh, fed the power in and you could spin the rear wheel on, uh, or lift the front end on really, really steep climbs. Uh, high bike, sort of ergon style grips. Enjoyed them, been it for two months now and no no complaints against them. Uh, their own quite nice neat stem. You maybe go shorter on the stem just to chuck it in a bit quicker on turns because you know it's a 25 and a half kilo bike. There's a lot of bike here. So a Scandi flick into turns will sometimes be handy to get it over on its ear. But as an overall trail bike, the geometry is pretty sorted, decent width bar. Uh, the only, probably the only obvious compromise is this resin lever here for the uh, dropper post I mean that is it's a bit of an eyesore but actually I mean two months in now it's been working absolutely flawlessly and again at the back it's an externally rooted dropper post so but it's a collar rooted dropper post so that's a fixed section of cable it isn't gonna you know it's that cable doesn't bounce around and scratch your paintwork but it is externally rooted so you're gonna have to upgrade if you want a slightly neater dropper post which is you know perfectly capable of taking there's routing for it that's probably the only point you're gonna go okay this is a basic e-bike in terms of looking at the spec but in terms of function absolutely fine uh the rims are roadie which is a rim manufacturer that worked for a whole bunch of people 35 mil wide eyeleted plenty of spokes tubeless ready uh so good sturdy rim uh, generic rear hub labeled up as a high bike it's been fine so far can't really say more than that and Max's tyres, DHR rear and a DHF up front and they're a 2.8 so plenty of girth in there and they're an EXO protection carcass so not full double D, they're not the fully reinforced ones but a reasonable tyre spec for a trail bike, certainly very grippy, very predictable, nice rolling feel but maybe if you're hitting rocks a lot on this, just to note the fender doesn't come as standard, uh, that's the new Crud XL fender but you can get it from your uh, rally dealer, which is where you'll be getting the uh, bike from. So there you go, there's a quick walk around on the bike. I think it's a real looker actually. It's really well integrated. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, the design language, there's a lot of lines going that way. It's all, yeah, hangs together pretty well. You know, the way the seats take it. Oh, I'm just blathering on here. Uh, you can tell whether you like the look of it or not. Uh, my job is to tell you how it rides. So it's beautiful up here today. So uh, make sure you check in and watch the separate uh, ride impressions video. So the sun's coming up. I'm going to get my gloves on because it's only about two degrees up here. There's still some snow up there. But thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you watch the live rider video. Uh, watch the other videos on site. And subscribe. Click the notifications box. And if you want more in-depth material, including a uh, video on this, where I deliberately rag it as hard as I can to see how quick I can burn them, that uh, 500 watt hour battery out, then that is exclusively on my Patreon channel. So uh, lots of extra on there for just $3 a month. Right, now time to go and use this extra range and extra power of this bike to go exploring one of my favourite riding areas. Cheers folks, over and out.